Hey everyone, I'm Noren Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel and welcome to this preview that just happened uh, here Saturday at uh, 9, 12, 20 that I am tired, I didn't get a good night's sleep and then GW's all like, Alexis, cool stuff and I'm just like, okay, I guess I'll check it out. So, I guess I'll check it out. So today's preview is brought to you by Games Workshop. <laughs> But it is to show off the new Necron Codex and the new Space Marine stuff. I did get the Land Speeder spoiled to me, the new Land Speeder. So I'm a little bit excited about this. So we are not going to watch the entire preview, which is only an hour and a half long, which honestly isn't that much. So I hope that there's a good chunk for us to review here. Oh my God, that is that might be the greatest, the greatest greatest Necron picture ever. Okay. Here's a cool worth waiting for. Here's a codex worth waiting 60 million years for. 60 million years in a tomb for. One of the first codexes to hit the shelves is Codex Necrons. And for the lore alone, it will be immeasurable, uh, an unmissable read for every Warhammer 40k fan. I'm wondering if they're going to retcon a whole bunch of stuff like they always do. It seems like every other edition of Warhammer 40k, the Necrons need to be retconned. So I'm interested to see if they're going to do that this time. Okay, I'm liking so far. Tell me, Immortal, have they left yet? No, um, sorry, my lord. They're back, and this time... The tanks float. Fine. Fetch the destroyers. Okay. Ooh. All right. That guy looks very upset. Making a skull. Skulls are cool. My Necron army is going to be so expensive. Those new flayed ones. Those are new flayed ones. Okay. One, that was adorable. Two, that was really, 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 really cool. And three, we now have a whole bunch of new types of uh, wraith forms that are based on the old wraith form from like third, fourth edition. Actually, third through. Yeah, third and fourth because fifth edition... They were retconned to be the wraiths that we know today. Whew, so, I gotta wake myself up. I am sorry about all of this. I will go back extra early just so I can go through all of this with you. So, what's new with the Necron lore? Well, it's been retconned for starters. Their ancient ancestral ruler, the Silent King, has returned from... His self-imposed exile, the galaxy-shattering news. However, his reappearance has caused something of a crisis of faith amongst the dynasties, and not all have welcomed him back. Finally, some some infighting. Yes. So, for those of you that don't know, the Necron Lord, the Silent King, the Overlord of the Necron Army, got rid of his uh, server protocols. I think they were called where all Necrons inherently serve him uh, because he wanted his dynasties to actually have some semblance of free will. This was actually expanded on in a white dwarf of all things. And in this white dwarf, the Silent King realized who the greatest threat to the, actual, to the galaxy actually was, and it was the Tyranids. So, a few thousand years ago, uh, actually a few million years ago, as the Necrons went into their slumber, the Silent King went and fought the Necron fought the Tyranids and tried to protect the galaxy, kind of. He was also looking for a way to undo the biotransference that screwed up the entirety of his people. And yeah, he couldn't beat the Tyranids and he had a massive force. So he came back to the galaxy, warned the uh, Blood Angels in the most infamous story created by Matt Ward, which was then later added upon by and rewritten by a few other good Black Library writers and kind of made a lot more sense. 
The Silent King has also been somehow tied to Sanguinius. We're not sure how yet, uh, considering that it's never explained in the Horus Heresy, but I digress. Um, we know that the Necrons aren't inherently evil, except for like Sotek Dynasty, which have the most destroyer protocols out there. So it's it's interesting to see that their their lore is actually being broken apart from them just being mindless automatons to actually having some semblance of like personality and things in their higher ups, obviously not their grunts. I've always posed this question, and I love people getting super defensive about this. It's probably a hot topic more than the female space marine thing. And that's, could the Necrons destroy the uh, Chaos Gods? And I want to hear your thoughts on this, because I know right now you're probably steaming at your keyboard going, Well, actually, no! Um, but the Necrons have destroyed their gods, and they use them as Pokemon, and use them as energy sources, and unleash them upon their enemies. So, I, actually, I, I wonder if you can get a Tezzeret Vault to entrap the same energies that make up a demon. I mean, the Nids can do it. Why can't the Necrons? Okay, the Codex, the new Codex will, the new Codex also expands on the lore of Scissorham. Um, I know what his actual name is, but the first time I saw it, I really thought it was Scissorham. Um, the Dynasty of the Silent King himself and reveals the impact their, that their rise to prominence has had on the other Necron Pharons and their dynasties. The book also showcases some stunning artwork that really helped bring the Necrons to life. Would that be unlife? Anyway, such as incredible pieces that seem numberless, um, failing, uh, blah, 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 blah. Anyway. We get this really cool artwork. I love this. I love that you can see the destroyers in the back. I want to know what the hell these things are, like up top to the right. And I want to know, like, because we see the um, the reanimator with the, um, the 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 doomsday arc cannon on top of it. We also see the destroyers, uh, the other type of destroyer, the tri-legged ones, whose name I can never remember. We also see a couple of other reanimators in the back. We see a lord here. And several of these guys. Are they Lich Guard? They don't look like Lich Guard. Hmm. Okay, speaking of Scissor Ham, they'll be receiving their own dynasty codes. Uncanny artifacts which provide them with significant edge, or three, oh come on, uh, in the battle. The Codex even uh, includes rules for creating your own Dynasty Code tool, uh, 2. I like that. I like that they're bringing that stuff from Psychic Awakening into the main 40k uh, codexes. I like that they're adding to Crusade and I like that they're adding to a whole bunch of different things in the, um, in the, um, in the mythos of building your codex and everything. So, Scissor Ham's Dynasty uncanny artificer each time a model with this code would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound roll a d6 on a five plus that wound is not lost so that would be like uh when i assault that caused d3 mortal wounds when i um do a psychic power that causes mortal wounds uh smite and things of that nature including uh ethereal stern's ability where she smites but it's not psychic powers it's faith um, each time a unit with this code is selected to shoot or fight, you can reroll one wound roll when making that unit's attacks. So just one reroll, which is actually pretty useful. When this protocol of the Undying Legion becomes active, so what is Undying Legion, uh, becomes active in your army, if every unit in your army, excluding Dynasty Agent, Ooh. And Satan Shard units has this code. You can select uh, both the command protocols instead of just one. Okay. 
So it kind of reminds me of the Canticles of the Omnissiah, and this would be something similar to Belisari's Calls, where he gets to select two. Okay. But what's with all this talk of command protocols? Well, yeah, golly gee willikers, GW, please explain. Well, consider one of the perks of biotransference, which enables the Necrons of a higher status to impose their will upon their, those who serve them. It may sound harsh, but don't worry. For you, this is definitely a good thing. I'm sorry. All of this talk of sleeping Necrons is making me tired. <laughs> if your army of Necrons all hail from the same dynasty, which also means that we can have mixed dynasties as well, um, and is led by a character with the noble keyword. Ooh, the noble keyword. Um, unless there's a type of keywords that are just known as noble keywords. Maybe like noble keywords, colon, what the noble keywords are. So that could be interesting. Then at the start of your game, you can secretly assign one of six uh, command protocols to utilize during the battle round. After revealing your selected command protocols, you need to choose which directive you will activate. Okay. This is sounding a lot like a second edition, um, like first, second edition, where you did command protocols for your robots, where you had a list of them. Um, any of your units within six inches of your characters will benefit from these directives with careful strategy and throughout... Um, Forethought command protocols can really throw your opponent uh, while giving you a massive advantage. Throw off your opponent while giving you a massive advantage. So it sounds like you want to castle up if you use these. Kind of interesting. Conquering Tyrant. All right. Directive 1. Add 3 inches to the range of this unit's aura ability to a maximum of 12 inches and increase the range of the following abilities this unit has by 3 inches to a maximum of 12 units. Uh, Lord's Will, My Will Be Done, Rites of Reanimation, and Directive 2, this unit is eligible to shoot with in a turn in which it fell back. But if it does, then units in this, uh, until the end of the turn, each time a model in this unit makes a ranged attack, subtract one from its attack rolls, attack hit rolls. Okay, a lot to unpack there. One, you can go up to a 12 inch range at maximum, which might see us uh, see other things because we do know that the Silent King themselves can expand uh, his aura ability. This was revealed to us in a um, Q&A a while back, and we know that they can add to the aura range of the reanimator. So the Synaptic Camel, as I've nicknamed it. So adding three inches to a unit's aura abilities is amazing because you're going to spread your castle really far, especially if you just plan it just right. Um, this unit's aura abilities and increase the range of following abilities it has by three inches. Okay. And then if you fall back, you get minus one to hit, which is pretty simple. The mysterious cryptex are about to bring another strain of their Tekion bow. Uh-oh. Ooh, the Tekion bow. That thing is I think is nasty powerful. Okay, so the Tekion arrow doesn't need a bow to fire, but you catch our drift. Uh in fact, actually it would be cool if it was a bow. I'm sorry. A Necron with a bow and arrow that just shoots a strength ten weapon every turn would be amazing. In fact, they're about to bring uh, four strings. Okay. I'm scared about that. Fully fledged variants of Cryptex divided accordingly to their hyper technological specialization and each benefit from their own data sheet. Um, oh, the plethora of thematic rules. Uh, the Plasmancer that made its debut in the Indominus box was just the start. Well, good, because that guy kind of sucks. Just saying. Furthermore, they can uh, be given items from the Canoptic Arcana. God, these. Whew, okay. For a nominal cost in power points. Uh. 
Okay, power or points. Sorry, I misread that. Representing the wondrous uh, techno magic of the ancient Necron Empire. Not only can these items be very handy in a tight spot, but they offer a, a versatile, versatile way to top up. Wow, I can read, I promise. My throat is dry. Representing the wondrous esoteric techno magic of the ancient Necron Empire. Not only can these items be very handy in a tight spot, but they can offer a versatile way to top up or round out your army list. As a master of temporal manipulation, a chronomancer, for example, chronomancer, I don't know how Necrons lose when they have chronomancy, for example, can be equipped with the means to slow your, slow your enemies to a crawl at critical moments, but more on that later. That would be kind of cool to note that uh, chronomancers are being affected by the Ordo Cronus, and that's why they can't win, because they're both just counter time controlling each other. Okay, Chronomancer model only. In your shooting phase, you can select one enemy unit within 18 inches of the barrel until the start of your next turn. Next turn, half the advance rolls and charge rolls made for that unit. So you're popping this turn one against your opponent so that you can stop them from assaulting you turn one. Uh, Necrons on Crusade. <laughs> Just Necrons on a Holy Crusade. That'd be really funny. The Slow Decay of the Self. Ooh, I like that. Purchase this requisition after a battle in which your crusade army contains one or more units with the destroyer cult keyword. Select one lord or overlord model that was also part of the crusade army. Remove that model from your order of battle and replace it with a destroyer cult character model from the same dynasty. You cannot purchase this requisition if you're doing so would cause your total point uh, point level to exceed your Crusade Force supply limit. The newly added Destroyer Cult character model starts with the same number of experience points as the character it replaced and immediately gains the appropriate number of battle honors for its rank. It's kind of cool that it heals too. Just saying. Just saying. So I will admit, I don't know too much about Crusade. I have been avoiding it so that I can go into it unaware. And that's kind of my big de my big point. But here in Arizona, it is we're still locked down and there's still no games being played. And the only game I played of 9th edition, I won like 40-0. So I didn't show a battle report for that. Okay. So now we get to see the Silent King. But let's see what it says about that. I feel like this, uh, uh, if you like us, if like us, you thought the basic crusade rules in Warhammer 40k were already pretty rad, uh, don't use rad, I use rad and I use it ironically, you're gonna love all the extra narrative goodness in the new codexes. We mentioned the Silent King earlier, and unless you've been slumbering in a tomb world for countless eons, you'll no doubt have seen the draw dropping model of Scissorham that's coming soon okay so him and his council on their floating chair of goodness with the two thingamajigs next to them these are his favorite rocks also um the uh the the wow the satan shard above him just powering this thing i absolutely love that to be honest so ooh, we actually get his wounds Ooh. Also, this thing is going to be such an annoying model to keep together with just being balanced on these little things. Same with him. He's actually balanced on these as well. So he's going to snap so quickly. So what I'm thinking is I'm probably just going to drill into the bottom here and put a flight stand into it or probably drill into it quite a bit and just put a metal rod in there. Seems like the best option to try to keep these things stable. Uh, blah, 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 bl
But then again, he is the leader of the Necron race, is accomplished, accompanied by two other pharaons, uh, blah, 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 blah. He has the limitless power of the bound Satan uh, at his disposal, so that's fair enough, really. However, we'll treat you to a few highlights. Okay, so he goes from nine wounds to one to four wounds, and then you got these dudes on there as well, which is kind of interesting. Can he summon an avatar? That'd be kind of neat. All right, so nine plus wounds. He has a total wounds characteristic of 16. He has a three plus save, which is interesting. Leadership of 10. Um, six attacks, pretty good. Toughness seven, which makes him very hard to kill. Uh, but most people are just going to be spamming melta guns, so he shouldn't be too hard to take down. Strength of five, which is his weapon probably adds three to his strength. I'm going to take a guess now. Weapon of Ballistic Skill 2 plus. Goes down to movement of 4. And his attacks go down as well. I don't like that. Ooh. And then you got these guys. Alright. That's a pretty hefty stat line, a stat line. Make no mistake. I actually think it's pretty fair, to be honest. It doesn't look overpowered. He's fairly slow. So it looks like turn one, he's going to start 12 inch, I uh, know, eight inches up. Um, he's going to move eight inches. So he's 16 inches up the board. His aura ability is six to nine inches. He's going to take center board and just stay there the entire game. A good melee unit will chop him down fairly quickly. Vanguard veterans will tear this guy to pieces. Especially with the three plus save. I really thought that he would get something better. I was really expecting a two plus. Uh, what's more, it's the it's backed up by a whole new swell of special rules, including aura abilities to buff your troops. Yeah, so he's a buff mander, not really. He's a buff mander with a huge base. So that's pretty good. Oh, and I'm guessing those are the other things. They have, what, five wounds apiece? And one attack? Okay. Yeah, so his rocks can attack you. I assume they just go and fall on you and then just, like, levitate back out. Um, can also help you destroy your enemies in a variety of ways, improve the Silent King's durability, and generally make him perhaps the most Formidable character in all of Warhammer 40k. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. I think turn one I can take him down. Like, the 16 wounds makes it so that I can shoot him turn one. And it's only 16 wounds. The average last cannon deals three damage. I take a ton of them. My multi melters and melty guns alone will probably be enough to take him down. Uh, two exorcist volleys can kill him fairly quickly, actually. So, we meet the Ophelian destroyers. The Ophelian destroyers? Or, I, I don't know how to say that. The ghost destroyers. So these guys are kind of really, really neat. They're the old... Like, I really like these because they are the old wraiths. And I really, really, really like the old wraiths. So I'm digging these. Also, they get a plasma sight. Because all the destroyers get plasma sights. Overall, it looks kind of like a lazy design. A little bit. It's just the tri-legged ones, which is one tentacle instead. Not saying it's bad. Not saying it's bad. I'm probably going to get them. But yeah. So three to six in a unit. This actually bodes well for the rest of the units in the codex going to six. And we have noticed this with Warhammer 40k. They're staying away from the number 10 and going with like sixes, fives, and things of that nature. Because most of these models are elites. They are three wounds, but this is going to help out the other destroyer squad get to that six man number and probably 
show that the bike squad is going to get up to six and maybe even the blade guard veterans because god knows that three they're pretty much useless 10 inch movement is really good so you're starting 18 inches up the board uh three plus ballistic and um weapon skill is is okay strength and toughness of four makes these guys easy to destroy only three wounds makes them pretty fair and balanced Three attacks a piece is pretty nice, so it's 18 attacks from a full squad, which doesn't actually seem like too many, oddly enough. Um, I know that's weird to say, but on three plus, you're missing with at least two of them, even unless you apply a reroll to that. Uh, but these guys are going to be further up than the rest of your army. Leadership 10, four plus save. That 4 plus save again makes them bolter bait. Their toughness 4 and their save is 4 plus, meaning that my regular sororitas bolters will probably chew through one, one or two of these just per squad. So it's, it's interesting to see that they have a massive weakness. So like the other destroyers, uh, the ones with the blades, the three legs, they have three different, um, they have three different weapons which is the strength plus, uh, the strength six weapon at AP minus four, which is devastating to be honest. That AP minus four is gonna be huge. And three damage is definitely putting down most elite infantry. Um, user, AP minus three, two damage each. Uh, each time the bearer fights, make one additional attack with this weapon. That's immediately looking like the better weapon, but it's only strength four. So it's bad, but it's also good because you get four attacks a piece. That's eight. Wait, six, 12, 18. Yeah, 18 attacks. No, that's a lot more. I can't do basic math. Ignore me. Um, that's pretty good, but it's only strength four. So if there's something in the army that can buff their strength, it might be useful. If they can get to that strength five, that strength five is super useful. That's where every weapon, every close combat weapon becomes super good because a power sword is now strength five for a space marine, strength four for a sister of battle and an imperial guardsman. Actually a catachan with a power sword is at strength five. Have fun with that. Two damage also. So these guys are marine killers. And they do have the living metal keyword. So melted guns might not be as effective against them, depending if the living metal is the same as the old living metal, or if it's a new type of living metal that just gives like a feel no pain. Reanimation protocols and command protocols. Hardwired for destruction each time this, uh, each time a model in this unit uh, makes an attack, reroll hit rolls of one. So that's pretty good. That's meaning most of their attacks are hitting. I think 75% of the time, all three attacks will hit. Uh, each time model in this unit makes an attack with a hyper phase reap blade, an unmodified hit roll of a six score is one additional hit. Now that means two, you're getting three additional hits on average, rerolling one, so that gives us a 0.3. Um, percent extra, I believe. I think it's actually like, no, I think it's 0.33 repeating for the extra attack with the rerolls of one. So you're looking at, let's see, 6, 12, 18, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 attacks at strength six, AP minus four, uh, three damage. And that's one of its average averages. And that actually seems pretty good. But the problem is that four up save makes it so that a stalker bolted just blows right through them. And two damage, so they can survive it, but a squad of five will kill these guys pretty quickly. All right. Whip coil bodies. Each time a melee attack uh, is made against this unit, subtract one from the hit rolls. Again, I'm sorry, I did just wake up. I stayed up until six in the morning and then woke up at 10 in the morning, so please forgive me. Um, let's see, subtract one. So this means Vanguard veterans aren't gonna be too great against them because they'll be hitting on fours with about 15 attacks, 
Ooh, what? Hmm. That might be their saving grace, is get them into combat as quickly as possible and hope that your opponent doesn't have rerolls, which every army does, so good luck with that. Uh, tunneling horrors. During deployment, you can set these guys up underground. Okay, so they have deep strike. Uh, that's, that's okay. If you're 24 inches apart in 40k, these things can move 10 inches. So that means you have to make a 14-inch charge turn one, unless you can advance with them and then charge if you have some type of protocols that allow you to do that. Starting nine inches away, though, means that your castle gets to move up. And then you get to pop up next to your opponent, but a smart opponent can bridge themselves so that you can't deploy next to them. And if you're going against Marines, which the majority of the armies in 40k are Marines, they're going to put a squad of Phobos Marines down somewhere and make it so that you can't start within 12 inches of somebody, ultimately making their deep strike pointless. Is deep striking these guys worth it? If you don't, you get blasted off the table. If you do, don't do it against Marines. There, big brain thinking. This is what you come here for. Infantry, destroyer, cold, Ophirian destroyers. Ophirian? I, you know, they probably say it in the video and I just have not watched it. And now we get the plastic dish, uh, the plastic flayed ones, which I absolutely love. I love that they have a skull. Like this is, where is it? I just saw him. This one is my favorite. Like, cause it, it shows the Necrons. Now, is that skull above the Necrons head or below the Necrons head? I gotta see this on the model. Cause if it is below the Necrons head, maybe biotransference is a lot creepier and more devastating than we thought. But if it's above the head, that's still pretty creepy. This dude's just giving somebody, just giving somebody a hand. But look at how sick these guys are. Kind of have a Texas Chainsaw Massacre feel to them. Although I feel like they should have more skin on them. I know that's weird to say. I like their models. I like this. This is cool. Each time a model in this unit makes a melee attack against an enemy non-vehicle unit, an unmodified hit roll of a six scores one additional hit. That's pretty good. I'm really hoping these guys are troop choices, because if they're not, they're kind of useless. Especially with all of the other melee units in the army itself already. These guys might not even be that good. Okay, it's about time we showed you... Um... <sighs> Apologies. It's about time we showed you the aforementioned Chronomancer, if you've g forgiven us for the dodgy pun. Oh, look at your little tentacles! Oh, I give you little tentacles. So you have the, um, oh, what is, what was that thing from, um, from, uh, the Marvel movies? The, the Tesseract Cube, I think it was called? He's just got a whole bunch of them. I like it. <laughs> I had hips for days a chick. Maybe a chick. They are very unhappy. They have an unhappy face. Like, it looks like they're pouting, like, hmm. You know, back in my day, we would have won already. That's it. Going home. <laughs> Just leaves and teleports back before the war. In your command phase, select one friendly dynasty unit within nine inches of this model. Until the start of your next command phase, you can reroll charger rolls made for that unit. And models in that unit have a 5 plus info save. So that makes the other types of destroyers better. But I still think the ones with feet are... The, the tri-legged ones are a little bit better. Mostly because I have them already. So I don't really want to buy more stuff. But still. Oh, look at you. You got your little bug body. You're adorable. The Psychomancer. Hi, get it. It's Psychomantis. It's Psychomantis. I love it. That is... That is a well-hidden joke. That is a well-hidden joke. Psychomantis. 
Um, they say space marines know no fear, but they are yet to meet this dreaded form of cryptac. These Necrons' techno arcana mastery is over fear itself. I guarantee this doesn't work on orcs. By channeling the same dreaded power of which the Nightbringer was so greatly feared, it can cause the most stoic foes to flee in terror before it. By showing them a spooky face! <laughs> All I can think about is uh, Uncle, not Uncle, Eustace, pulling out the spooky mask and scaring courage. I love it. Spooky face. And that's on it. Uh, there's more Necrons on the way. Okay, so Nightmare Shroud Aura. When an enemy unit within six inches of this bottle, <sighs> subtract one from the leadership characteristic of the models and the units subtract one from combat attrition tests for that unit. So it's completely useless. Um, I'm sorry, that just sounds completely useless. Anything that minuses leadership, in my opinion, is just it's so bad and so pointless, especially now that you roll one and barely add anything um, for the combat attrition test. I guess it gets subtracted by one leadership, so it's easier to fail, but no, no fear means you get to re-roll it. So I don't see Space Marines failing this. And anybody that would fail this, you just spend two CP and don't care about or you just don't care about them because at that point their combat efficiency is already gone so they just you just kill them off so i've never seen fear as like a big thing in 40k 8th edition and in 9th edition it's looking much the same way um so now we got the space marines oh look at the shocked guy all right let's take a listen Yeah, it's not too loud for you. Lord Cole, uh, you can't just solve all of our problems by making more Primaris Space Marines. <laughs> the hell I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Get a uh, new land speeders. I'll look at the angry cat meme. <laughs> new plastic kits for the assault uh, intercessors is pretty nice. Oh, uh, there's the heavy. Yeah, just as I said before, and I've been saying this for a while. The eradicators can now take multi maltas uh, in their heavy gravis armor. A lot of people thought that they were new models and everything. I took one look at it and I'm just like, yeah, no, that's just the Eradicator's armor. I'm sorry. I have to re-listen to this. I'm sorry. This was... This was too Lord perfect. Cole, uh, you can't just solve all of our problems by making more Primaris Space Marines. <laughs> the hell I <laughs> GW does self-aware humor. Oh man, that is, whew. that was a good wake me up. That was a good wake me up. Oh my God. Okay. So we get the new codex. <laughs> Holy sh- Okay, okay, my throat is like completely dry. I apologize. Even in death, I still serve. This is a, uh, is this a crusade thing? This looks like a crusade thing. As well as the Necrons, a new Space Marine book is chock full of awesome supplemental crusade rules for your angels of death. One of our favorite additions to the Requiem 
even in death I serve, the requisition, even in death I serve, which sees a beloved but badly wounded character from your order of battle and turned into a dreadnought sarcophagus to continue the fight. I'm sorry, I'm not, not, not going to do that. Purchase this requisition when an Adeptus Astartes character unit, excluding a vehicle unit, from your armies, from your crusade force, gains the secondary or second or subsequent battle scar. Remove that character from your order of battle and replace it with a dreadnought, excluding named characters. From this same chapter, you can select a Leviathan, a Derideo, a... Um, going based off of this, you get the Leviathan, Derideo, the... Um, the, the, the other one, which name I can't remember, all I can remember is the Gladius, which is the um, Dreadnought from the, 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 the um, uh, Custodians, but it's that, the Contemptor, that's it, the Contemptor Dreadnought, the Chaplain Dreadnought, uh, that would be interesting. Hmm. She could select the Chaplain Dreadnought, the Siege Dreadnought. The Mortis Pattern Dreadnought, the Mortis um, Contemptor Dreadnought, the Derideo. Uh, there's a ton of different Dreadnought sarcophaguses to choose from. Um, you can only add a Psyker Dreadnought if a character it was replacing was a Psyker. You cannot purchase this requisition if doing so would cause your total power level to exceed your Crusade Forces supply limit. New Dreadnought starts with the same experience points and character replaces uh, and gains the appropriate uh, number of battle honors for its rank. You can literally have a character die and replace it with a Chaplain Dreadnought. Just saying, they might want to fix that. They might want to FAQ that. Uh, do, 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 do. So we get Spooky Boy, we get Reaper from Overwatch over here. This is definitely Reaper from Overwatch. I don't care what anybody says. I can definitely see this as a skin. This should be a skin. Look at those nipple tassels. Boom, right there. Anyway, uh, ba, 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 talking about that. The new, the new codex also consolidates many of the popular rules featured in the first made, um, features that first made an appearance in the various Psychic Awakening books. The chapter command rules are one such example, meaning that you'll be able to upgrade one of your chaplain, uh, chaplains, librarian, tech marines, and very and variety of other characters to the head of their order, but at a small cost in power or points instead of using a stratagem. Now that I actually like. So we get the master of uh, sanctity, which is the chaplain upgrade, or the master of sanity, as I like to call him. Which sounds like a death metal band. Masters of Sanity. Huh. Good death metal band song name. That's probably a death metal band. Uh, has the following abilities. This model knows one additional litany from the Litanies of Battle on page 112. And uh, in your command phase, if this model is on a battlefield, it can recite one additional litany it knows that is not already being recited by a friendly model in this turn. Okay, pretty simple. He can sing twice. He is twice as good as the normal bard. Oh wait, sorry, he's not a bard. Frelix and Warlord trade. You can give a Master of Sanctity model the Emperor's Judgment Relic instead of giving it one of the chapter relics. In addition, you can give it give them the wise or warlord trade instead of giving them another warlord trade. So, each time your Warlord recites a Litany, add one to the roll to see if it's inspiring, so he inspires on a 2+. plus. Uh, each time your Warlord is selected using the Commanding Ortery or Stratagem, uh, that Stratagem costs one Command Point instead of its traditional cost. And it's Relic. Each time an attack is made, the Bearer in your army cannot re-roll. Uh, each time attack is made against the Bearer, your opponent cannot re-roll the Hit Roll cannot re-roll the wound roll, and cannot re-roll the damage roll. That's super useful if you're using this on a Chaplain Dreadnought, because that's where I'm going to go immediately. The Barra has the following abilities, the Emperor's Judgment Aura. While the enemy units are within 6 inches of the Barra, each time a morale test is taken for the unit, roll 1d6, discard the, uh, and discard the lowest result. Ooh, that actually sounds like a better rule than the damn, uh, 
uh, the chronomancer or the fear one. You shaman enemy model within six inches of the bearer. While an enemy unit is within six inches of the bearer, each time a morale test is taken for the unit, roll one additional d6. Yeah, that sounds like a better ability than the guy who's literally built to fear people. It's a brand new adept to Sestardi's units, but save uh, you the struggle of identifying the 98 units. You're going to show you the rest. First up, check out the chapter, the captain with the mastercrafted heavy bolt rifle. And yes, he's wearing Mark X Gravis armor. So we finally got one in Gravis armor, which is kind of cool. Actually, we had Gravis armor, didn't we? Hmm. Mark 10 Gravis armor. And now we get to see the Devastator versions. Wait a minute, a heavy bolt rifle? Yes, indeed, the heavy bolt rifle. Uh, also happens to be the standard armament of, wait for it, the heavy intercessor which is the Eradicator, by the way. And they're called that for a reason. Like their captain, these bad boys aren't just heavily armed, they're heavily armored too. Thanks to the Gravis Armor, a Toughness 5 troop unit with three wounds. Oh, troops. If they're troops with T5, that's insanity. So, looks like we actually got uh, some new weapons. So that's the heavy bolt rifle, that's the heavy bolter, and that's a bolt rifle. Okay, heavy intercessor. So do we have the executioner heavy bolt rifle? Okay, or the executioner heavy bolter. It's a heavy two instead of heavy three, but a 42 inch range. So it's got a longer range. Is that good? Well, it's three damage though. That's insane. Four to nine with a... Oh, they can go to a unit of ten. Oh, that makes them terrifying. Hellstorm bolt rifle, Hellstorm heavy bolter. So heavy four, two damage, no minus, at strength five. Ooh, are these guys good, though? Why would you not take the heavy bolter, though? The Executioner Heavy Bolter, it just seems better. It's Heavy 2 versus Heavy 4, but less likely to save against. It depends on the opponent. Hmm. And the regular Heavy Bolt Rifle is Rapid Fire, so that's two shots, negative one, and one damage. Hmm. Is it good? The heavy four seems okay, but that that executioner heavy bolt right uh, heavy bolter seems like the best choice in my opinion. It's heavy. You fire it on turn one. It gets the additional minus AP for the devastator doctrine and does three damage a pop. You have ten of them in the unit that you're rerolling. Uh, you're dealing a ton of damage, or you do a squad of five, and you're still dealing a ton of damage. Oof. Uh, if a model in this unit is equipped with a heavy bolter, it can uh, take one of the following options. If no models in this unit are equipped with heavy bolters, with a heavy bolter, you can take one of the following. Uh, the heavy bolt rifle replaced with uh, the heavy or the executioner. Okay. For every five models in a unit, one heavy intercessor heavy bolt rifle can replace with one heavy bolter one heavy intercessor bolter. Oh, you can't equip the whole... You can't equip all of them with it? Is that good? If they're a troop choice, that makes sense. I like how suddenly they just... They immediately became better than the tactical marines again. Uh, for every unit... All models in this unit can have their heavy bolt rifles replaced with one Hellstorm bolt rifle. Which doesn't... It's just one extra shot, no AP though. I like the AP. Although it's AP minus two, which gets ignored by Marines and Sisters. And probably Necrons. So would more shots be better at that point? But then you're getting the eight, the boost to your AP for being on terrain. 
Hmm. Hmm. Is this a good unit? It's toughness five. Two attacks apiece to three attacks on a charge for shock assault. I really have to consider these. Ooh. The fact that you only get one executioner heavy bolter, I really thought you would get three at minimum. For every five, so you can get two at most. And the sergeant can't get anything really cool. Um, stalker bolt rifle. Wait, it says that they have a heavy. For every five models in this unit, one heavy intercessor's heavy bolt rifle can be replaced with one heavy bolter, one heavy intercessor, heavy auto bolt rifle. Oh, okay. One heavy intercessor, heavy. What the heck is this trying to say? And also, what's a heavy stalker bolter? Because that's not even listed there. Or one heavy intercessor's heavy stalker bolt rifle. I want to know what this heavy stalker bolt rifle is. What is its stats? And why would you exchange it for an executioner heavy bolter? which seems like the best weapon here. Hmm. So now we see the Eradicators. While we're on the Gravis Armor Space Marines, check out the multi-part kit for the Eradicators that made a debut in the Indominus box. So they got the Melta Rifles and the multi Melta, which is nice. So multi Melta, heavy two, strength eight, AP minus four, D6 damage. Uh, gets D6 plus 2. And that's pretty much it. Which is okay. The Blade Guard Veterans also got an upgrade. So, the Blade Guard Veterans are also being treated to a multi-part kit. Offering dynamic new poses and the ability to equip the Sergeant with a neo Volkite pistol. Okay. We got Pointy McPoiterson with his shield on his back. We have this guy with the shield on his back. Okay, so they look like they're armed the same. Yes! Options for the assault and... Uh, yes, I purposely got out my Thunder Hammer strictly for this. Okay. As for the new Blade Guard veterans, we also be um, officially picking up the Death Deathwing Wolfguard keywords too. So they'll seemingly fit in with the number of your elites. Okay. And your Dark Angel and Space Wolf chapter. A multi-part Assault Intercessor kit is on its way with more flexible poses and everything. But this is what I care about. The fact that you can upgrade the Sergeant. Sergeant upgrades are extremely important. Nice. They look fantastic. Although this guy looks like he's got his hair greased back. Like, you know, he's, he's ready to do business with you and his name is Tony or something. Okay, then we get the ridiculous looking land speeder that we've seen like almost a year ago this thing was spoiled. How the heck are they reloading that weapon? Is that marine really gonna like reach down, grab the ammunition, pop out, lift the harness up, get outside the vehicle and reload these things during battle? Wow, that's inefficient. Sorry, just, yeah. One of the coolest Primaris releases, the Land Speeder. Uh, the Storm Speeder Hell st Hail Strike. Okay, so this adds to the leader, the list of Land Speeders that we have. The Land Speeder Typhoon, the Land Speeder Annihilator, I think it's called. The Land Speeder Tempest, the, um, the older marks of Land Speeder, and now we have the newer marks of Land Speeder. The Storm Speeder. I wonder if it's going to have the flyer keyword. Okay, so the models in it kind of have a beaky helmet-ish thing going on. They actually have like a flight command thing on their face, which I really like. So that's kind of cool. They also have small shoulder pads. 
So they're not actually wearing like the full covering shoulder pads. So it looks like we have the Hailstorm, uh, Hailstorm weapons up top and some missiles on the side and a Gatling gun in the middle, which is pretty decent. This one looks like it has a Typhoon missile launcher, probably the Strength 8 rockets. Uh, that looks like some type of Inferno weapon. And more rockets? Hmm. All right, so 16 inch movement, which is insane. This thing's moving anywhere it wants on the board. 10 wounds, uh, goes down to two with an eight inch movement, still making it combat efficient. Has three attacks, which is strange. Do all three of them get out and punch you? That's what I'm gonna assume. I'm gonna assume all three of them get out and just punch you and then get back into their vehicle. Three plus save, which is common for a vehicle of this size. Uh, what else do we got? What else do we got? Weapon skill three plus, the ballistic skill goes down because it's a vehicle. Strength five, which is really weird, and a toughness of six. So, which is pretty average for a, um, a vehicle to be toughness six, a light infantry vehicle, an infantry fighting vehicle. Uh, so weapons, the Hellstrike missile launcher, which I'm gonna assume is this one. Yeah, I'm gonna assume is that one. Uh, heavy 36, strength 8, AP minus 3, 3 damage. So pretty flat damage. Uh, only two shots, though. The Crackstorm Grenade Launchers, which we've seen before. And this is the Hammer Strike. So this is this one. So that is a Crackstorm Grenade Launcher, which is 18-inch range, Assault 1, 6 strength, AP 1 damage, uh, AP 1, and D3 damage, which can be pretty okay. It's got two of these, it looks like. Yep, two grenade launchers and a Melta Destroyer. Wow, this thing went from... Why doesn't it replace that with just twin LAS cannons then? It's weaponry, it's kind of all over the place. Strength 8, AP minus 4, D6 damage, heavy 3. So it's Melta Destroyer is its best weapon. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, targets a unit within half range, uh, so 12 inches which this thing is going to get within 12 inches immediately. It's gonna deal a minimum of three to a total of nine, of eight damage. That's pretty decent. It does have the explode rule. Um, Raven wing, if this unit is from the Dark Angels. Ooh. So I like how they're doing this. So if you're from the Dark Angels, you gain the Raven wing keyword. So only the Raven Wings one has the special abilities and everything. But we didn't get to see what the Iron Hail Heavy Stubber does. If that is an Iron Hail Heavy Stubber. It does have fly. So this thing can attack our crafts, which is good. Depth of Society's Chapter Vehicle, Storm Speeder, and then Hell Strike variant. It does explode. Okay. And then we have the Thunder Strike. You've been. Thunder. Sorry. Hmm. Look at this bloated little fool. It looks like he has an inflated testicle. I'm sorry. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't get into that. I won't get into that. Nope. 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 Anyway, let's take a look at this thing. So this thing does have the Laz Talon, which we know is like a 36 inch range Laz gun. Some type of scanner, it looks like. Uh, hunter killer missiles, two of them by the looks of it, and some type of cluster rockets up top. These look like the cluster rockets from the um, repulsor. So I assume strength seven, strength eight. Their variety is kind of all over the place. Like I kind of wish we had a double last talon up top on this one. And it doesn't look like we have any options for changing their abilities. We just have the generic stat line of them. We have just the Hellstrike weapons. And we know that they're Ravenwing, which could be cool. I mean, we could take three of these things. I would take three of possibly this one. This one looks like the best. It is a vehicle. So actually, is it a vehicle? As weird as that sounds, yes, vehicle. Okay, so it can move and shoot. Um, Oddly enough, I oh, this one has the Melta, but this one has the Gatling guns. So this one's an infantry killer. This one's the anti-tank variant or anti-light tank. 
And this one is, uh, I have no idea, the recon one. I don't know. The 200 killer missiles tend to point it towards anti-tank, but, and the last Talon points it towards anti-tank. But it just feels like the other one would be better. All right, let's see the books incoming. I'm hoping it has something funny. I'm really hoping for something funny. Oh. Angels of Battle, Return Triumphant. So we have the Blood Angel Codex Supplement, which we now know that you need the base codex for and then the supplement. The Plague God's favored son has infected the galaxy. Is this gonna be a codex supplement? No. Interesting. What the heck is that thing? What the hell is that? I like it. You get this little thing that, um, I'm not going to explain what these things look like, but, uh, they, they are definitely there and they are grotesque looking and I love them. There's also some new units there too. New, uh, pox walkers. Those are definitely new poxwalkers. There's some of the old ones scattered in there, but there's some new ones off to the side. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's definitely a new one. Is that an eradicator? That almost looks like the eradicator. For us and the all father. Bark, bark, woof, woof. <laughs> Codex supplement space wolves. See Ragnar in the back. You see all the ridiculous hairstyles they have. Suffer not the alien to live. Please be a codex supplement. Please be a codex supplement. Yes! Okay, why I'm excited about that. Why I'm excited about that. That means that the Death Watch can still use everything in the codex, which means Centurions with special issue ammunition. Super excited about that. Um, it also means uh, aggressors with special issue ammunition with the Bolt Storm Gauntlets. Just saying, I'm super excited about that and it better be in there. It also means that they get all of the Phobos Marine stuff and all of the uh, Intercessor stuff. So I'm looking forward to Death Watch in the future. Now, if they, yeah, they, they definitely have those. We knew that they had those. Uh, they're not showing us anything else though. The Codex supports this action, except for the Death Guard, of course, they're heretics. All right. So we get this dude. Uh, he's got his uh, vile spewer or whatever. So he's got a toxic power fist. I like that. He's also got um something that he should probably see his doctor for. More like a, a specialist of some sort. He should definitely see for that. So let's take a look. That's a really nice box art. For some reason, the wolves are fighting Tyranids, and you're fighting a uh, nameless void. Should be the other way around. And there's the Death Guard with the Mortarian on the front. Death Watch looking as cool as ever. I love the Death Watch. I love them so much. It's so badass. Them and their Mark IX armor, which isn't Mark IX, but it totally is Mark IX. Dark Angel fans won't have to wait much longer. Your Codex Supplement will be on its way early next year. Now what about Grey Knight players? Uh, what about them? Now this, 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 I like, I love updates to Forge World stuff because, yes please, um, this, I'm super excited for. Supremacy suits, the Tiger Sharks, the Gargan, Gargantuan Squig Off, 191, that isn't in the Book. I don't think. It's the Phantom Titans, the Brass Scorpion, the Asrastus, um, the Leviathan Dreadnought. This one's the named character for the worst, the second worst chapter of Space Marines. The Death Horror Krieg. Uh, update the model line. That would be cool. Wait a second. Whoa, hold up a second. You don't get to sneak that past me. Ah. One, that's a new head for the Chaos Knight, uh, the Chaos Warhound. That's the Chaos Warhound body. I'm hoping they bring that back. 
But they're not sneaking this past me. No, 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 no. You don't get to sneak this past me. Ah! Yeah. That's an updated tank. Also, it looks like they get to keep their Rough Riders, so their Rough Riders are very unique to them now. The kids look surprisingly clean. I know that's weird to say, but the Death Corps Krieg kits look pretty bad by today's standards. Uh, they look better than the Guardsmen currently, but that's because the Guardsmen are ancient. Hmm. Rules for your Titan Legios. Cool. Let's hope the, uh, my Repressor is in there. All right. So we have this classic picture of the Death Corps Krieg, which is, you know, the French army soldiers. They're even in their blue uniforms and everything, which is really nice. Uh, let's see. A word on the Nova Open. Usually this time of year we're at Nova Open. And yeah, unfortunately. So, 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 so. Uh, in the meantime, I encourage you to keep up with the speed. I've been possibly organized runs, one of our favorite events of the year. We will miss it dearly, but we hope in 2020 we'll return again. Blah, 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 blah. All right. So, winners of this, I think the Necrons don't have. As weird as it is to say, I'm not impressed with the Necron rules. Um, I'm sure when their codex actually drops, we'll see some crazy combinations and everything. But right now, I'm just, I'm not really seeing it. Uh, I think the real winner here is this video right here, which I want to watch again. Where is it? Where is it? Just because this one was funny. Lord Cook, uh, you can't just solve all of our problems by making more Primaris Space Marines. <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry. So, I want to hear your thoughts. Tell me in the comment section down below. What do you think was your favorite thing in this? I think, hands down, my favorite have to be... You know, I was excited about these guys, but I'm not too much anymore. I think I'm excited mostly about... The Assault Intercessors getting options, so I'm going to be cutting the hands off of a bunch of my Assault Intercessors sergeants and putting some Thunder Hammers on them, because Thunder Hammer goodness. So, tell me in the comment section down below there. Check out all the links in the description down below. Follow me on all sorts of things. Check out my Patreon. Patreon helps out the channel. As always, I'm Nerd Queen Alexis. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye.